Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. I wanted to answer the question, should you sell patterns for print on demand? I'm gonna first kind of answer the question and then I'll show you different ways that are both paid and free that you can generate patterns if you decide to go on it, go on that path, excuse me. Um, so f first off, the answer is yes. You could, you should, you would generate patterns. Um, if you want to make money on print on demand, it's not the only way. There's thousands, if not hundreds of ways to make money uh, through print on demand. Uh, me personally, the only time I'll really, really, really focus on selling a pattern or multiple patterns that is and actually give it some time, I personally wouldn't sell it on Redbubble or TeePublic. Um, sometimes I can go with Society6. Sometimes I can use that pattern on Zazzle, but most times, guys, I'm either going to be posting it as a digital product or a physical product on Etsy, or I'm going to be posting it on my own website. And to put things into consideration, everybody starts from somewhere, right? Uh, so I'm once again, I'm going to give you guys free and paid, but I kind of want to explain my reasoning as to why I say... I wouldn't upload patterns to Redbubble, even though I have in the past, and why I wouldn't do it for T Public. All right. So first off, let's just go to T. So first off, let me go to T Public and explain kind of why I wouldn't sell patterns on T Public, and I'll explain that process first. So for most products on T Public, they are ideally fitting in that transparent format. And when I say transparent format, I mean a single image that's close to, you know, your ideal vector or something like that in the middle of a t-shirt or a hoodie. Now, do are there people on T Public that sell patterns and succeed and make money? The answer is sure. I mean, there are possibilities, guys, in this game for anything to happen. But as someone who is literally uploading on a daily basis to these sites and fulfilling my maximums, and I even have virtual assistants doing the same thing, my main goal is not to just upload numbers, right? My main goal is not to just drop as many uploads as I possibly can. It's to get as many winning designs as I possibly can. And when I look at patterns, and I look at the majority of products that are being sold on TeePublic, TeePublic has released public information. I made a whole video on this. It was called Exposing Redbubble. Um, where they show what are the most products that actually sell on the platforms created by the Redbubble group for their investors. The Redbubble group is literally the managing company that manages both Redbubble and TeePublic.com. And Redbubble and TeePublic.com are controlled, once again, by a company called the Redbubble group. Okay? Now... When I look at all these products and I look at the information that they provide to us, my main goal, like I said, from when it comes down to making designs for T Public, is to create these type of images. So when I say these type of images, it's either just straight up image and text. Notice how the background of this image is transparent. That's what I mean. I don't, I'm not talking about the style. I'm not talking about the art. All I'm simply saying is an image in the middle maybe some text here and there, but most importantly, if you look at the products, what are the most products that sell on TeePublic? T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, okay? It's very rare um, that something like, excuse me, I don't wanna say it's very rare, but there's a less chance of you selling if your product only works well with a few of the products. So for example, if we take Tapestry, for example, okay? My design can stretch from all the way to the left to the right if it's a pattern on a tapestry. But a tapestry is just simply one product, right? And I can actually validate this by showing you guys what I mean. If I type in flower pattern here and just search, and let's go with something like this. This is what I'm talking about. Am I saying that people won't buy this? I'm not saying no, but it's not probable. It's possible, but it's not probable. And this is the main difference is I, when I'm selling something, I want to give myself the utmost highest chance to be successful. When I look at this design, I say, okay, the corners are showing on this design. There's a background printed on it. This doesn't look like an ideal t-shirt design for me. Based on everything I've learned, based on all my experiences, 
I look at a design like this and I say, okay, there's a few products this can ideally sell on. And it's not the majority. The first one is the mug, right? If it stretches over the whole entire mug, it could work. That's the mug. Then we have other products like a pillow, for example. So with a pillow, unfortunately, once again, it doesn't stretch all the way out. You look at, even though I believe it should, but it doesn't. You look at a tapestry, for example, it still doesn't stretch out. And I know this example might not be um, a bad example because I think some other tapestries do. Like, for example, this one. This one looks great. There, This is where it works. So right now, I've narrowed it down to two products where I would make it work. A mug or a tapestry. I'm sure there's a few others. You know what I'm saying? Even tote bags, I know it doesn't. I think it, or actually, I don't want to claim that for sure, but... Uh, let's see here. Yeah, tote bag, it claims all, it, it goes all over, so that's great. So you have a few products here where it does. Let's see, wall art, I know it definitely does as well. But once again, it's not the majority. The majority of sales on T Public are t shirts, hoodies, and stickers. Those are the majority. And if I'm if I know that the majority of people will come to T Public to buy for that reason then I want to go for something that is an image-based product, right? So, for example, if I type in here Corgi, okay, and I've used this example many times on this channel, but we can use something like this. It's a picture. There's no uh, background here, and it could work on any product, right? So that's my thing for T Public. Now let's talk about Redbubble real quick. Why do I not sell uh, patterns consistently on Redbubble? So to be clear... If I had to choose one, whether it's Tee Public or Redbubble to sell a pattern on, it would be Redbubble because there are more products where a pattern can work. However, okay, with patterns, guys, unless the pattern is very specific to a specific search, then I would not use a pattern on Redbubble, okay? So unless it's specific to a specific search. What do I mean by that, a specific search? So... If, for example, I know that people are searching for something, right, and I have the ability to make it a pattern, then in that rare case or in that rare scenario, I would go ahead and do that. But for example, let's type in here cherry pattern, okay, like a pattern of literally cherries. If we, if we go here, and this is not really what I expected to find, but let's just say we take something like these. This is exactly what I was looking for. I wouldn't personally sell something like this on Redbubble. Now, I could sell it on my own website, and it would do massively successful, but I don't want to hold up this real estate on this. Why? Because it's, A, too much competition. There's probably thousands of other people doing something similar, if not the same, and I also look at it and say, okay, that's one piece of real estate that I'm putting on my account that I know has a casual search. It's not a specific search. And when I say specific search, meaning I can't really define myself from the audience group. The audience on T on Redbubble who are uploading the exact same design as me, I, I can't differentiate myself. How can I make a picture of cherries that is just so much better than the competitors to where I hog up all the sales? It's, it's almost impossible. You know, I can't really think of a, a design that would really, really be much better. I mean... Let's just take a look at this, for example. You see these pineapples here, right? These pineapples are slightly different. I look at these three pineapple designs and I say, you know, to me, they're all pretty much the same. I really can't tell the difference between them. And this is kind of the main concept between a pattern is that, once again, it might look amazing, but if it doesn't serve a very specific searched need, right, then I'm not going to create it or turn it into a pattern, right? Okay, so now that that's clear, now you guys kind of understand why I wouldn't choose to sell patterns on certain marketplaces, let's talk about how I would use it. So let's take a look at Zazzle, for example, right? We go to Zazzle.com. Zazzle.com is a place where I would use a pattern, and I would use it specifically as a design element. So for example, let's type in here a pillow, okay? So we click on pillow. And the beautiful thing about Zazzle pillows is that we can extend our design to the edge of that pillow. And the beautiful thing, like I said, about Zazzle is that Zazzle's products are customizable on the end user base. So if I create this design, right, 
and there's a customer who comes in, they can click this personalize button. And instead of the word grandpa, they can write dad, for example, right? And they hit done and things change here. That is a very, very crucial, effective use case for the patterns because I can create floral patterns. I can create some sort of base text and then create some things that where people can actually edit things. So that's a point in time where a pattern is actually useful. Uh, just the other day, I was actually creating an iPhone case and I actually should put this up here. Um, iPhone case uh, of a marble like background. Okay. Or pattern, but I actually added a name to the pattern so where it ends up being customizable actually something similar to this now definitely not the same color scheme but something similar and because i've already maximized my z rank i'm doing well as a store i have a lot of sales i'm really pushing the algorithm to rank up higher and create more sales and zazzle is one of those amazing places to where it has a huge snowball effect in terms of your success the more you succeed on Zazzle, it just creates more and more success over time. Almost like you're pouring down, or it's not pouring, pushing down a snowball down a hill of snow. It's just going to accumulate more and more snow. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going to create more sales for you. So that's exactly what I was doing, and that's a Zazzle example. Another example is Society6. If I was to upload a pattern, Society6 would be one of the best places to upload it with no real quote-unquote customization because society six doesn't do customization like that let me show you what i mean if i go over here to the product and let's type in let's find a pattern this is an example of a pattern okay this is called alien abduction pattern here um, we look at this you could see pictures of these trees and an alien abduction of course with the tent but this is the pattern that has literally just been um repeating throughout the throughout the design okay which is great you know it's a great design and this works for society six i want to state that there have been some pr products on society six within the last three months that have generated over a thousand dollars in profit for me and that's not an exaggeration we're talking about a thousand plus in profit okay not in revenue in profit i don't count revenue because it's not money that goes in my bank account why would i care about that i care about profit and um Patterns have been extremely useful to me in Society6. In fact, if you guys want to see, maybe I'd be willing to show two or three patterns that have actually sold for me on Society6. I might have to disfigure the pattern a little bit just so that I can protect the identity of my shop, uh, Society6 shops. But uh, we can we can make that video if it's requested enough. But anyways... Society6 is one of the places, and I've said this before, but it is one of the easiest places to perform well on. The only hurdle you have to pass is just getting approved. Well, I, I kind of say approved into the marketplace, but really there's a strategy behind it. And when I say approved into the marketplace, this is on a listing by listing basis. This is not on an account basis. And I've, I've like I said, I have a whole lesson on this in my members area. In fact, I'm just going to pull it up, pull up the members area here. If we go to poddegree.com, okay, let me go ahead and push this down. And I have a paid lesson on our members area that says appear in search society six. And I was explaining the experiment that I ran and I was explaining it, like I said, for an hour and six minutes, a 66 minute video of me explaining this experiment that I ran in order to test why am I having certain designs show up in the search and why are there people who are struggling with other designs that are not showing up in the search? So I had my premonitions, of course, and my guesses. And I created, obviously I have multiple accounts on Society6, but I created an extra account and I uploaded over a hundred plus designs that I think were just set up proper, uh, improperly, incorrectly. And of course those designs did not rank. They were not even found in the search to begin with. Forget ranking. They didn't even exist. Okay. And then what I did was I created two other designs, just two on the exact same account with over 100 plus designs that did not even show, created two more designs, but I followed a very specific formula, which is the same formula that I've followed for all my other Society6 designs that make life a little bit easier also when it comes down to the uploading process. But I followed this specific process, fixing certain things, 
And within a matter of weeks, the designs were there. And it was interesting because those two designs both made money on an account, by the way, that had over a hundred plus that didn't make money and didn't even be, wasn't even shown into the search. So it's a whole different conversation for a different day for a different time. You guys get the idea, but I'll leave a link in the description to the um, Society6 uh, lesson if you guys do want to see it and do want to uh, get access to it. But I'll leave a link in the resources, like I said. Um, we also have free lessons. If it just so happens you want to check them out on our members area, I'll leave a link in the description. Access. But anyways, so like I said, you kind of are seeing now the differences, guys, here between where I would apply um, some patterns and where I wouldn't. Lastly, I just want to kind of close out with this, and I'm not ending the video here because I do want to show you different ways you can generate patterns, both free and paid, but let me kind of give you a uh, an idea, all right? The best place, in my opinion, above all, whether it's above Society6, above Zazzle, above all these different places, to upload patterns is to your own website. And the best way to do this is to create a theme, guys. Create a theme. This is the most powerful piece of advice I can give you when it comes down to actually creating a store, creating your own private website that has success long term. In fact, I'll leave some links and some resources that you can access to learn how you can build your own private website, to learn how to do all these things. And of course, we'll be uploading more content on that. But if you have a website and there is an influx of consistent traffic and people are looking for products and you also are building up an email list, which is another huge thing, you want your products, your, excuse me, your visitors, your web visitors, your people, essentially your audience, they're waiting for you to upload new products. They want you to upload new products. Not only are patterns easier to build and easier to do, but they also are tremendous artwork. You know, people like them. I look at my house that I grew up in. You got curtains that have patterns on them, tablecloths that have patterns on them, uh, pillows that have patterns on them, uh, covers for like the couches and the sofas, they have patterns on them. What doesn't have a pattern on it, I do not know. Pretty much everything has a pattern on it. So patterns are useful, but you have to learn how to play the game of the marketplace before you decide to just create patterns blindly. And speaking of that, now I think it's time to start walking into or going into this idea of how you can actually create some patterns, whether it's free and whether it's paid. So let's let's kind of go into it. So first thing I'll show you here is this pattern that I made. It took me literally um, half a second to make, maybe a second. Uh, it basically, you could see here the title of this image says stock bubbler, and then it has like an identification number. This image, this pattern was made by the stock bubbler tool. The stock bubbler tool is one of the many tools that I use for business, for print on demand, and also for selling stock photography. It just so happens that selling stock photography is one of the best ways to sell digital files of uh, patterns. Now, it's not necessarily the, the craziest, most profitable way. And when I say craziest, most profitable, let me explain. If I take a pattern, I put it on Society6 product, that Society6 product can make a tremendous amount of money in sales. If it's sold as wall art, you know, the one of those eight, eight foot by eight foot sticker on the wall type pieces, like mosaic type pieces, I can make plus a hundred plus dollars in profit off of one sale. Okay. Um, if it's sold as just like a canvas, I can make, you know, 20, 30, whatever. If it's sold as a sticker, I'll make pennies on the dollar, but hey, it's still something. In reference to stock photography, which once again, we have many videos on stock photography and how to get started. And even in our members area that you just saw, we have both free and paid lessons. This tool is one of the easiest ways to actually create some images. So let me show you. So stock bubbler right here, they have this built-in keyword tool where you can extract different keywords and use them. And I think it has over like 10,000 different words where it's like, you, know, you guys see it. I don't, I don't really need to explain it, but this is the stock publisher tool. It gives you tags for, for the, the uploads that you have uh, for the stock photography. And it also gives you key, uh, designs. So I'll go over here and I'll add my um, information or a prompt for that image. So it's colorful, ornate floor, flower pattern, flat design, and I'll just hit submit. Okay. Now this 
prompt is what controls the creation of the image. And in about a second, it will literally have the image created. A second, two seconds, three seconds, whatever. It will take some time, but it will create the image. Bingo, we have the image created. I'll hit download. Let's actually enlarge it. Here we go. There we go. That's the first one. This is the second one. I want to also give you guys a little like update here. This computer that I'm using right here is not for print on demand. I just use it for recording these YouTube videos. So all it takes is just a few seconds to download this tool and set it up. And prior to this video, it took me about a few minutes, like maybe two minutes to set it up. And I also have tutorials on how to set it up and how to get it going and all that. But anyways, like I said, you see here different designs, different um, patterns, if you will, like I said, how to set this up. Now, if you decide to end up using patterns like this, you must upscale them because all images right now from print on, uh, excuse me, not from print on demand, but from AI, they're still smaller in nature. They're not like 10,000, 20,000 pixels. You're looking at things that are, you know, a little bit smaller in the thousand, like maybe a thousand twenty four by a thousand twenty four or, you know, maybe maximum twenty five hundred pixels. It's just not enough. And especially all this detail, if you want to get it approved, things like that, you need to upscale it. And the best way I found, and once again, I've shared this before, but we go to our tool, Lumnar Neo. And, and for anybody who's been watching my channel consistently, which most of you are, you know about this. I, I'm, you know, you guys have seen this thousands of times. And I just go to the image, I drag and drop it here, right? I go over here to this, uh, by the way, I want to show you guys how it looks before we upscale so we can see the improvement, right? Um, because I did have a question the other day, I believe it was John Fazy. shout out to John Fazy. he's a viewer of the channel. He says, um, like, does the AI upscaler actually improve the image? Does it help the quality or no? Or does it just make it bigger? And I'll tell you, it absolutely does improve the quality. So you could see the image looks like this right now. If we take this image, we upscale, let's go to a 4X upscale, okay? It will drastically improve. It not just improve, but it will improve drastically. Look at this. This is much better than what it once was, which looks like this. So let's actually zoom in. So this blue flower here, this is what it once looked like, okay? And now let's go to the second one, the, the upscaled one. This is the non-upscaled one. We go here, we zoom in. And there you go. Look at that. That is drastic, a drastic improvement. That's just not any kind of improvement. That's a drastic improvement. But anyways, the image here is only 4,096 pixels. For an image this detailed, I would absolutely upscale this more. You know, I would go for another 2x. So you're looking at over 9k plus in pixels. Uh, 9k? I don't know. My math is a little off. Close to 9k, right? Like 8,000 something. We'll find out in two seconds. But, um, Maybe like 8,000, yeah, 8,192 pixels. I was going to say 8,210. So, hey, I was close. My math is not great, but I was close. But anyways, um, there you go. So 8,192 pixels. You see the art. If I really wanted to, I can go in here and do some customizations to color. You know, so I could bring up the contrast, make it something like this. And that is a, that is a significant change, by the way. If you look at the difference right? That's the difference right there. I can click the before and after and you can see on the colors how it looks, right? That's quite significant. The, you know, that that's a big change. So, um, there's a lot of things you could do to change different colors, different structure, things like that, make things more abstract, less abstract, just depends on how you like to set things up, but you get the point. So those are some kind of tools that I would work with if I'm working on patterns. Now that is one method as to how to create patterns and it's paid. So you want to see how to use it. You go over here to botsandapps.com and we scroll down, we scroll down. Let's see here. Uh, there it is. Stock bubbler tool. It costs $14.99 a month for all the people that were the first to join. If you guys remember, I dropped a video when it first released and the price was $9.99. So obviously with time, things go up, things cost more, but Hey, um, that's why you should subscribe to the video. Shout out to everybody who subscribed because if you subscribe, then you get to see when I release things early, when I make videos on certain tools. And also if you hit the notification bell, you'd be the first to know. So sometimes watch people watch a week late, two weeks late, and they miss out on certain deals. But anyways, um, yeah, so that's how the tool works. It works for stock photography, etc. But anyways, let's get back to business now. So that was that's one way to, to create a, uh, um, a pattern. What's another way you can create a pattern? GPT. So GPT is another way. If you have GPT-4, you can do this. 
And of course, it uses the exact same t technology as the stock bubbler. I can go over here and paste this, right, which is Dolly is the base. Of course, there are some alterations with the stock bubbler, but hey, this is a basic, a very good base for Dolly. Uh, we can type in flat design. Let's type in simple pattern. Uh, I could even get, you know, a little more specific with it. Let's say I want to use certain colors. I'll just use my color palette tool. I'll hit generate palette here. And let's say I want to use this color here, this green, right? And let's say I want to use white as well and white colors. Um, so, hey, let's hit generate and let's see. Now, you guys know with GPT Dolly, it doesn't always fully focus on your prompt. Obviously, there's an element of create creativity in there and it could deviate a little bit but it's a great place to start it doesn't have to match your exact needs the whole point when you're selling these patterns if you're going through the stock photography route is you got to crack them out pump them out do as much as you can all right so this is not a bad image you know it doesn't look bad to me i know some people might not favor it all the time but it doesn't look bad now a little tip with this guys and i know this video is packed with information is an image like this I would go into Canva and I would magic expand this. I would make this bigger because I don't like how it's cut off or it looks cut off. And then what I would do is I would remove that background, maybe use it as an element for something. But it's a beautiful image, right? So if you already pay for GPT-4, you can use this. Now let me show you a free way to create patterns. No software cost, no login, no nothing. This is a software that I showed before called Pattern Hippo. And Pattern Hippo... They have built in, let me see, 310 patterns, but each pattern can make you thousands of patterns. Let me explain, all right? So I've made actually money off of Pattern Hippo with this exact, um, I made money with a lot, of, a lot of patterns, but this one has been one of my most profitable. And if you look at it, it literally just looks like waves, okay? Now, I personally customized it to have a black background and red wave colors, so I, this, this was one of literally the most profitable patterns I had ever created. And I sold this on Society6. I've sold this on Zazzle. In fact, the Society6 order was such a huge order. I think they spent over like $4,000 worth of those 8 foot by 8 foot um, uh, sticker uh, mosaic type things. Maybe it was for like a restaurant or something, like a wallpaper type thing, but that's what they bought. And so the great thing about this software is it has this little button that says inspire me and I can click on this and it can generate different patterns for me. This pattern looks different than this one and this one and this one and you can change different thicknesses of the waves, right? You can change different things. You could change colors. You can change the zoom. You could change so many details. Now this is the wave pattern, but guess what? You have so many other patterns. You have brick wall patterns. Let's click on that one. Let's click inspire here. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Look at that. All right, let's go back here to the home page and let's click on let's click on this octagon or leaves pattern. Okay, let's click on this. Let's hit inspire me. There we go. We got different patterns. And once again, we could change angles. We could change the zoom. We could change so many different things, right? And this is once again an example. Now, some people say, well, is this are these patterns seamless? And my answer is no, but it doesn't have to be. I'll explain. When you download a pattern, you just increase the dimensions. So if you were potentially going to use this for Redbubble, for example, you just increase the dimensions, right? Let's just say to 4,000 here and put this one at 4,000. And then what you do is hit this PNG button. Okay, let's increase our zoom here for a second. But it's going to be so large, it might even be like, I mean, 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. Let me go actually, let's go a little bit larger here. We can make it 10,000. Let's see if we can make this. Actually, let's go with something a little bit smaller. I don't want to take too long to download here on YouTube. We click on 8,000 pixels. Let's hit Inspire Me. Inspire Me. I want to hit it again. This one is good. I'll hit PNG. It will take a minute to download, but I click on this. And look how detailed this is. This is actually so detailed, you could barely even see it. I have to zoom in so you can see it, right? Now this image, let's see the actual size of it after it's zoomed 8,000 by 8,000 pixels. I can zoom in, I can duplicate this, I can do so much to this on Redbubble. 
I can zoom in. It won't create any kind of issues, any kind of situation, and it will be really, really good overall. So speaking of these kind of images here, I increased my zoom. You could see here the sizing, 8,000 by 8,000 pixels. So it, it can do a lot for you, especially if you take this and then jump it in a upscaler as well. I mean, it, once again, you can't beat free. This is free. Um, in the real world, I would usually say you get what you pay for, but here you're not paying for anything, but you're getting a whole lot, right? So I will hit inspire me on these Chinese, uh, pattern. They look like lanterns to me. Uh, really, really nice. That blue one, I should have downloaded it to use it, but like this one really, really good. I'm actually going to download this now. Uh, I'll hit PNG. It will download. Boom. All right. So I got myself a pattern right here and uh, you can use this, sell this on Etsy. You can sell patterns like this on Creative Fabrica. You can sell this on Redbubble, TeePublic. Well, TeePublic, once again, I really don't recommend it because, once again, the, the limit of the products is not that many. Um, if you do go the Redbubble route, try to have searchable kind of details to it. But Society6, it's a, it's a game winner. Uh, Zazzle, it's a game winner as an element. Once again, I wouldn't just put a pattern there by itself with nothing else. I would do other things to it. But um, you guys see here, this is, I guess you could say this is a master class on patterns. We give you three different resources how to create patterns, aside from the ones you guys already know. Like, you can use MidJourney to create patterns. You can use Leonardo AI to create patterns. You can use Lexica to create patterns, which, by the way, I'll leave videos to those in the description box down below. Uh, there's Geometric pat. I don't even think I saw this pattern before. This is a new pattern they must have added. Uh, but um, all kinds of pattern. This tool is free. Like I said, free. Uh, so, uh, concentric circle. I don't remember this one either, but hey, lots of different patterns. This, this pattern reminds me of Target for some reason. Um, but anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. A whole bunch of stuff here. I know it was a lot. I know we went through a lot. We talked a lot. Uh, but I'll leave links in the description to pretty much every resource. If I miss one and you need it for some reason, just leave it in the comments. Tell me, hey, you missed one, uh, and I'll bring it back. But hey... Uh, I'll put I'll, I'll update the description, but thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video was beneficial to you. I'll talk to you guys soon and uh, peace out. Bye. All right. See you soon.